Hi, I'm Jackie Greff with Tonal Vision. This second video is designed for people who are familiar with the Panasonic Lumix GH5S and just want a quick refresher on how to use it. We have an accompanying blog article that lists our menu choices that you can refer to. I've separated this video into sections so you can find the information more easily. Lens choice. Before using this camera, you'll need to decide what lens to use. This is an important choice because the lens determines what the camera sees. For the GH5S, you'll need a micro four-thirds lens or an adapter. The micro four-thirds format gives you about twice the focal length of an equivalent 35mm camera. Zoom lenses are the most flexible, but they're also the most expensive. Prime lenses tend to be sharper, but you'll be changing lenses a lot for different shots. This first lens zooms from 12 to 35 millimeters and is good for close-ups and inside shots. This second lens zooms from 35 to 100 millimeters and is better if you need a lot of distance, for example, outdoor landscapes. Another important consideration is whether the lens can communicate with the camera. Any micro four-thirds lens will work with the GH5S, but many Panasonic lenses offer image stabilization and autofocus, which are often not available with other brands. A final consideration with lenses is the aperture rating. Our two Panasonic zoom lenses have a constant 2.8 aperture throughout the zoom range. As a result, the brightness doesn't change. With less expensive lenses, zooming in will often result in a darker image. Lenses also affect the image quality, distortion of objects in the view, depth of field, compression of the background, and focus controls, which we won't cover here. Photography. We've talked constantly about video, which is why we bought this camera, but occasionally you'll need to take photos. The easiest approach is to use intelligent auto mode. In this mode, press the shutter button halfway down to focus, completely down to take the picture. Videography. Our videographers will primarily be using this camera for video. You can record video in a variety of modes, but we tend to use the creative video mode because it unlocks a lot of features, like variable frame rate or slow motion. Stop and start recording with the red record button on top. Fully depressing the shutter button will also start video recording. Now that you know how to take pictures and video with this camera, let's talk about some important topics to make them look as good as possible. The first is focus. Focus peaking is helpful to confirm that important parts of the image are in focus. In focus areas will have colored edges. If you're using a prime lens or want to focus manually, rotate the focus mode lever to MF. If you have a lens that communicates with the camera, moving the focus ring on the lens will bring up an enlarged display of focus. We use autofocus a lot with our video. To use autofocus, set the focus mode lever to AFC. Press the FN3 or autofocus mode button on the back of the camera to bring up focus options. Manual white balance and exposure. To get the best results as a professional videographer, you'll almost always want to use manual white balance and manual exposure. The primary exception might be casual B-roll. Manual white balance is important to keep the camera from adjusting the color in the middle of a shot. To set the white balance, Press the white balance button on top, then use the front dial or the touch screen to choose an option. We always color correct in post, so as long as you're using a manual white balance setting that looks something like what you see visually, you should be okay. We also prefer to set the ISO, aperture, and shutter speed manually instead of letting the camera choose them. This prevents undesirable brightness changes in the middle of a shot. Setting the camera to display a histogram will help determine whether the image is properly exposed. You want to see most of the histogram showing in the middle, rather than being clustered toward the upper or lower end. Zebra patterns will also help identify overexposed parts of an image. ISO adjusts the camera's sensitivity to light. In general, keep the ISO as low as possible because the image will be noisier at higher ISOs. To set the ISO, press the top ISO button, then rotate the rear dial or use the touch screen to choose the ISO. Shutter speed and aperture also affect image brightness. However, shutter speed also changes the amount of motion blur in an image. Unless you're going for special effects, 
set the shutter speed to twice the frame rate, or 60. With our settings, the rear dial changes the shutter speed. If you have a lens that communicates with the camera, rotating the front dial will change the aperture. If not, there will be an aperture dial on the lens. Quick reminders. Before we close, I'd like to re-emphasize a couple of the camera's quirks and how to deal with them. If you suddenly can't see an image and instead just see an information screen, you might have accidentally bumped the display button on the back right. Press it again to change views. If the monitor turns on and off as you move the camera, you might have accidentally bumped the LVF button to the left of the viewfinder. Press it again to fix the problem. If you're having problems focusing, check to see if you have a lens that communicates with the camera. If not, you'll have to manually focus using the focus rings on the lens. Thanks for watching. I hope these videos help you on your next project using the Panasonic Lumix GH5S.